Magandang umaga. Uh, Magandang umaga. 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 Magandang umaga.
make an impact again in changes that we know will be uh, addressing human rights or violations of that matter. Okay. Next, we have a representative of a fire. <laughs> um, so, uh, we're Alliance of Filipinos for Immigrant Rights and Empowerment. Um, and uh, I'm Naomi, uh, by the way. I'm, I work at a fire. Um, and as Tita Nita said before, um, we were founded by Filipino immigrants. Um, who were also advocates of like people power um, in the Philippines, Tito Jerry, Tito Nita, I believe Professor Anna Guevara, um, and some other uh, others. And um, we continue to organize our Filipino AX um, American community um, on issues surrounding um, social, economic, racial justice. Um, and we really hope to continue organizing our undocumented immigrants, our, um, our seniors, our youth, and workers, um, particularly domestic workers. So currently we have programs um, that really geared towards our mission and values reflect uh, the change that we want to envision happening in our community. So through immigrant rights, um, organizing, workers' rights, programming, um, health education, things that affect our community um, in particular. So if you want more information about how to get involved or any of our programs and services, um, how to become a member, you can contact me or you can contact um, any of us by going on our website you know, for information. We are on the second floor um, of this building. We've been here now uh, a little while and it's it's a beautiful space so I welcome you to Hana Center Space um, and they've been really great in um, providing this, this safe space for us to be able to continue holding events and organizing and actions um, here, to, here at, at this building. So um, thank you. From uh, the Philippine American Grandparents Association of Chicago. Okay. Yeah, the Philippine American Grandparents Association of Chicago. From Chicago. Okay. I am Sandra Richmond, and uh, I am uh, representing Panpa uh, uh, since uh, the uh, um, the president. Uh, two who are uh, uh, in front uh, for the registration, so we are really taking uh, active participation. And uh, I think the Philippine, the Pug Pug is the, I think the, um, the oldest uh, organization of uh, grandparents in Chicago. And this was formed in Rizal Center also, but then it was also put out together with <laughs> Anyway, this is a non-profit senior organization that was established in 1988. It was primarily formed to validate nostalgic feelings of senior members <coughs> far away from home. FAGPAC offers a new program in alignment with its uh, mission statement, which is to empower and inspire members through social, recreational, civic, healthcare awareness, and religious pursuit for the interest of individual well-being. Uh, 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 in case of the disaster, we were able to give uh, some, uh, uh, some donation uh, to uh, uh, to Marawi and also to the disaster here and then we want really to be educated on uh, what is really uh, the uh, uh, human rights that is why uh, we uh, try to uh, uh, to gather people uh, to come here but unfortunately it is uh, is no way so you know if you are seniors then it's time for you to go and uh, uh, move around especially to them uh, winter. Okay. okay, so uh, may maybe I can uh, uh, ask uh, some of the members. Yes, please stand up. Yeah. Okay. Yes, please stand up. Uh, stand up, uh, Pag Pak. Yeah. Okay, and then the others are uh, <laughs> Pag Pak. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Because, <laughs> um, our board actually is like, um, you know, like, um, significantly, it's the one that was in the 
Tony Oman and the Tony Office they merged together. Circle was founded by the members. Those kids are like grown up and um you know um they wanted they wanted to um the kids to um see, learn our history and our rich culture. That's why we found the certificate. Um it's a non profit organization and um it's the work of the the mission of the is really to promote um cultural awareness to arts and um we've done a lot of um like plays that really talks about our culture, about our issues. The last one we did was the caregiver, which was about um the rights of domestic workers which was passed and um it was a big part of that was to uh you know like thinking doing all those shows and um was that the um Dan Dan the representative who came over to also to uh to pass the bill. So it's been around for over twenty six years and it's still continuing um to work it's way um, you know like about you know like about all these issues, human rights and just all the other issues that we have. And it's um non five of our non profit organization. Well, anyway, here, uh, the irony is that the Rizal Center, where we used to do all our activities, we are one of those unfortunate persons who are uh, sent to the street <laughs> and a uh, victim of human rights, in a way. <laughs> yes, our uh, beloved. Uh, Pilipi Alisabiana there was uh, put in boxes and yeah. and probably is the most uh, famous victim of human rights. Uh, killed here in Veneta, December 30, 1896 at the age of 35. Who, so to speak, uh, sparked the revolution, the first revolution of the Philippines. Uh, because of the spiking, no limit on her hair, and her mysterious among voluminous writings of the national hero. 
Uh, that's basically what uh, they expect us to do. Mark uh, commemorate his birthday, June 19, and commemorate uh, his martyrdom, December 30, every year. And there's a statue behind the uh, Wise Memorial Hospital. By the way, you are invited to the Philippine Consulate, our consulate, but uh, usually initiate the total opening at 9 o'clock and we cooperate as nights of this hour. They lay it. Sing the Philippine National Anthem, among other things. But anyway, that's the ceremony. And in the evening, uh, now then, we used to have it at this hour center, but no more. We were able to get the Yami buffet. <laughs> now we get the buffet. And also our cultural program on December 30, you are all invited. And uh, that would be at about uh, 3900 uh, West, 3, West Lawrence at the Yami Buffet at 6 o'clock. Well, anyway, uh, there's so much irony because this is very painful for me because uh, uh, there used to be a lot of politicking in getting this position that I am in. Yeah, I never saw this one because it reached a point where the Knights of the South reach is kind of bottom, where there's so much problem and no one will tax position like the one that I'm holding now. And it's Rovino Chrysostomo who taught me very, very much to, for the sake of the Knights of the South, take the position. And he's now my number one problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ironies are not uh, lacking in our lives now because uh, I'm here actually, like, uh, excuse me, to uh, give, uh, getting a few more time because, like this morning, it's a struggle because I have all the symptoms of flu and I've been put together by so much music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, I think I'm getting bored for this. Just like Mr. Duterte, I'm 70 years old. You know? <laughs> But it's that very thought that compelled me to come here because if there's mess now, it's still our mess, you know, our generation. And Trump is 70 years old, you know. And uh, I uh, edit and publish the Pinoy. When I see 70 percent of the millennial approve of the way to turn the gas system, there's really a deep problem here. We have reached out to these millennials. I'm looking around now, I say, wow, when I saw there are five young people uh, counting everyone, 75% of these are old people like myself. <laughs> but it's good that two more came, so that brings it down to 70. <laughs> but we have to reach out, because it seems like the message is not coming through. You know, Nika and I have been on this since 1972, 45 years ago, and before the uh, Philippine study group, and I had that the, the first uh, Philippine uh, 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 civil liberties group here. You know, I, I was pushed to have also that civil t uh, Philippine civil, t uh, civil liberties, restoration of civil liberties in the Philippines in 1973. So the struggle goes on, and you think when 1986 came, there was some light at the end of the tunnel, only to get into darkness again, as we have now. now. And going back to the Knights of this one, here is more ironies, because you will think, being a knight, they will think they will know better, because I came to the international conference in Dabao, do I have to say, well, the, what Dabao is all about is about the Dutertes, you know. That's where they held. Uh, the Bide, the former Supreme Court, invited when we our last international conference in Vigan, they wanted in Cebu, but because Duterte became the president, the political masters used that they used Dabao as the venue for this year. And the Knights of Resolve had given the president of the Philippines, the highest, the highest rank in, in, 
in the fraternity, it's called KGCR. They like a lot. They they stumble and they 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 do everything to get all this acronym, which are not very important after the beginning. <laughs> but they gave it to they give it to the thirties to be given to the highest marking member of the fraternity. And over there the talk was excuse me, the talk was members of the Knights of Results and Ladies of Rizal, that was the time when the Lima was picked up, you know, was killed. And we are very happy. Booting us that they won. And you know very well that's a human rights uh, uh, incident. So we are living in a world where it's not lacking in ironies and the challenges are enormous. Even in your own kind of talk, the message is wrong, you know. So I thought I would share those because I'm glad that there are still about 25 of us here or 30 who are concerned, you know, and let's keep on fighting, you know, okay? Or Montreal. Christine Somogoy is from General Santos Cotabato. And her father is another one of those defenders of human rights with the Cariton. Uh, Will Barrow. Anyway, Christine is a Mennonite missionary in Africa in the little, little town of, uh, not town, state of Burundi. You remember how the 
Tutsi and the, they were all killing each other, Burundi and the next door little country. She's there as a Mennonite missionary. It's just amazing how the courage of such a person to just face the, the conflict. And she's always connected with us digitally. <laughs> So we'd like to start an activity where we ourselves try to navigate uh, these human rights in our own hearts. Um, so for us to think critically about its uh, importance and see and reflect how uh, these can apply to ourselves and to our immediate community. So we're going to divide uh, people into uh, groups of three to four. Um, so we're going to have about six groups total. So can we count uh, out loud to all of you? But here are the individual instructions, just in case you guys can't hear me. All right, so what you have uh, in uh, tiny pieces of papers are statements. Uh, and these statements you can divide uh, equally in uh, per person. We have 13 each. Uh, yeah, you should have 13, and then can you please uh, distribute those uh, as equally as you can? Yes. 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 No, 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 I was just... Okay, no problem. So you guys have one, two, three, four, five, five six. Uh, can one of you go to the window? It doesn't have to be just the other one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, Okay, so after you guys have divided as evenly as you can, um, now you can try to quietly, without discussing with your group members, put the statements in the slots that you feel is appropriate for that statement. So for example, if there's a statement that says, um, torture is wrong. Do you think that that belongs in the in every case category? Or do you think that torture is wrong only in most cases? Or do you think that it belongs in, in some cases? So you can go ahead and do that. So we will put the number on the, there's the three columns. Yeah. 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 But you don't have to write that. You can just lay it off on the board. Ah, OK. OK, OK. Yeah. Open, yeah. yeah. Face, face up. No, Sorry, no, face no, up. No, I can put it for you. Oh, face outside. Where, which one? Yeah. Where we Oh, you will you tell us in most cases? Okay, game. Let's go. Okay. 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 Education in Chicago, for example, is so divided. Um, so maybe in every case that should be it. Because you know how young or old you are. You have the right to education. But parents. In every case, I feel like. Um, yeah. There are most cases. Just because. Right, it's like it's a pretty slow. They have the right to allow people to. Because those children are supposed to be. Say something. Because they're children, I feel like. Who are suing their minors. If it's minor, it's always like the parents. Um, that's what it's choosing has happened. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. But I feel like looking at into that paper, there's no, I feel like there's no question that parents decide for the, the path of the minor children. That's without question. But I think the deeper meaning behind this is not every parent, the education that they do have access to is the ideal one. So in communities where there's lack of resources and underserved um, education systems, like, like the schools that don't have money, so the quality of education What do we all think? Do we think in every case, that this should be something? Yeah. Uh, so since it's only the guide for education, it doesn't say the place of education. You know, like the, you know, like the, so you meant like they can choose the, the type of school or the place of school that they want to have. You know, like, but it says in the only the guide for education. The guide for education. That when you, whatever that term you're talking about, place. Um, well, not, not just place, I'm talking about quality of education. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah I guess it depends uh, on yeah. so in what case exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I think all, like, all, I think all of them have like Is it that? Yeah. Yeah. We were trying to hear yeah. 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 How about, I would go, yeah, I would go with that. How about in number three? Yeah, we can do it. 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 It should be number one. Yeah. In every case. In every case. Sure. So, the question is, Papa, the officials from our government, you know, once you go into, like, the Good question. So, her, you are free to talk and meet anyone as they will as you wish. But she was saying about the specific example of Trump talking. This is just an assumption. Talking to the Russian. What? What? No, it's it's not. Legal. Oh, transparent. Yeah, transparent. Correct. Such people yeah, to decide. Yeah. I think has also the same right, mm -hmm. but it has to be transparent, especially if you are an elected official. It has to be transparent, so people will know. Right? But we are not going to prevent it. But I think it's the same with the other one. He has to be responsible to the consequences of seeing. Okay. okay, so looks like we are okay here. Okay. Number 11. All people have a right to educate. Oh, okay, all people. To be given to their children. In every case. Huh? In every case. Because we know better than So, who is the one 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 who is a second. a second contradiction. Oh, I see. All people have the right to education. Uh -huh. And then parents have the right to choose. Uh -huh. Hey, all. I just want to add two things. Oh, yeah. I mean, right. To do a, a, democ a democratic kind of consensus where you do it by numbers. Uh -huh. Right? And then two, uh, only if you think so. And then, but number two, if you think that there are any sort of limits to the statement, you cannot put it in every case. If you think there are any kinds of things. Okay. He's right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the parent is the one making the, the decision for the child. All people have the right to education. No, no, I think this number, the number It's all cases. It should be okay. Basic, basic. Uh -huh. But the parents should also have the right to choose the kind of education. Ayun na yun, party na na yung parents niya, right na na yun. Pero I think there is no contradiction there. That is the truth. Yes, yes. All the time. All the time.
hindi naman contradictory ko, kundi it's it's on the part of the parents, parents yeah. they should be educated yes yes the right children yes. good okay number nine people should be allowed to have or not have whatever religious beliefs they wish you agree with that? And you? Uh, in some cases, not in the oh, So why do you think? Uh, people should be allowed to have or not have whatever religious beliefs they wish. We are going to uh, now look at all of the rights that are in the box in every case. Those are now the rights or the statements that you guys feel should be basic human rights that you guys agreed on. Those are now your fundamental human rights. So just take that in. What? And then now look at all the statements that are not in the in every case box, which means that in most cases and in some cases. Now try to see if you can change that language or add anything to it that will make it so that it belongs in the in every ah, case box. Okay. okay, okay. So we know this one already, right? So we know. It, what, so how would we solve it? If you guys want to write it down anywhere, um, you can. If you, if you want to add want that, to change uh, it. on the piece of uh, statements, uh, if you guys need pens, let me know. Could choose their own. Okay, so what it means to say, according to what you're saying, what it means to say? <laughs> After the fact, I mean, the, the, the first line will prevail. That's it. To hit the goal. That's why you have to voice. Yes. A nice exercise, right? I think if we do this in all household, mm -hmm. there will be no trouble, no arguments, no arguments, exactly. because they'll be given a we chance to everything. decide and then make an agreement, mm -hmm. or even don't make. Meaning, at the beginning we didn't agree on those items, right? yeah. but we also agreed on several. Because we don't because it's pare -pare sure that everybody will agree. We have the right to choose the kind of education to be given to their children. Uh -huh. We thought that portion limited the first sentence. Because like, for example, if your parents will tell you, go take nursing. But you said, no, I want right. photography. But, you're right. And the, the question is like, how do you define education? Basic education is like basic math, reading, oh, writing, that's another, literacy, that's another. <laughs> or specific. Yeah, so that's what... That's, that's a basic right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the first so, thing. So, but, but yeah, it doesn't say that in the way that that's worded. So, not to you all to figure out. So, 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 so we're saying... So far, far. <laughs> we, should, we should not add this. We should just stop from all people have a right to education, whatever it is. Okay. So that's what it is. Yeah, something like that. So... So you all are parents. Yes. So basically, you're saying that you, as parents, you're agreeing to that. You're giving up your authority or input to tell your children anything about their educational development. So if their kid wanted to do something, say, I quit, I don't want education, you can't argue with them. Is that, that's what you're saying. And that includes the re that includes the right to say I don't want. Yes, it, it should be. And as parents, if you if you give up that second piece, as parents, you're saying, okay, I have no authority to argue with my kids. Yes. What about you? Well, I'm I'm thinking about uh, a child or an adult child. 
wants to buy an appliances. Ah, but it doesn't say adult child. It, it says okay. education. If, 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 you know, I'm talking about some practical uh, decision making in the day, daily life. Mm-hmm. If your son who is already separated from your home wants to buy an appliances and then the, the mother will say, you have to tell me first what you want to buy. And then uh-huh. I will tell you where to buy. And the, and the son will say, oh, I, I have my own decision. Why I, I don't have to. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a problem. Case. That's another case. Right. That's another case. Yeah. But he has the right yeah. to say that. Yeah. yeah. And you, the parents should say, okay, if you just need my advice, yeah, ask me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It should okay. be that way. There are always agreements. There should be, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's what we find here. Mm-hmm. Everyone has the right to his or her, her own opinion. opinion. Correct. Right? But the key point is, how can we actually share mm-hmm. the opinion and then make the right decision? Correct. Otherwise, if, you, if I don't hear your opinion, mm-hmm. I just tell my own opinion. That's, that's bad. Right? That is yeah. already... Dictatorship. 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 Correct. <laughs> yeah, Just you're, you're okay. dictating. You are curtailing his rights. Right. It's good that we all agree here. Killing, oh, killing. That's, killing is wrong. Killing is wrong. Do you believe killing is wrong? Yeah. Yes. Huh? What about self-defense? Uh, it's just the right. Okay. Killing, Killing is, is wrong. wrong. Do you, because we all agree. All cases. All cases. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 okay. the commandment says thou shalt not kill. Actually, my question is somebody has a uh, uh-huh. 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 <laughs> what do you think of that that's wrong that's wrong how about you and you for me magdadalong iisip ako na ilipat yan to be honest it is biblically said uh-huh. killing is wrong uh-huh. but in our culture it is culture it depends. So, in most cases, ko ilalagay siguro because if that person has the done like criminal mm-hmm. or uh, whatever that is against uh, mm-hmm. our will, <laughs> just like what, uh, what is happening in the Philippines. Okay, so let me clarify. Mm-hmm. You're saying this killing is wrong only in most cases mm-hmm. just like that. because if the person is a criminal mm-hmm. he can be killed just like is that what you're saying uh, it depends uh, that's what i'm saying it depends if the person is criminal just like what is happening in the philippines uh-huh. Uh-huh. so the police are searching them uh-huh. and they, they first pull their gun and almost kill the uh-huh. police of course, the police will first shoot him. Okay, so the, so the situation changes mm-hmm. in, in what you're saying. Mm-hmm. There was a confrontation. Correct, but just like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? But killing is always wrong. I know that. Right? It's always wrong. So I think that's a critical thinking. Mm-hmm. If we look at the situation mm-hmm. and if there's a danger mm-hmm. in the life of a law enforcer, mm-hmm. the law enforcer can do a self-defense. But there are other rights here. That person should be tried. Yeah. First. Right? Yeah. See, the police came immediately said, this is a killer. Mm-hmm. But there's no third party who said, no, my son is not a killer. But there are cases also, for example, a criminal or a drug addict or drug lord or whatever, he had received, he had uh, the authorities have said that uh, so penal like this, yeah. to hear, like yes, that. Yes, yes, but killing is wrong. Yeah, I know that. But the thing is, of course, the police is the case, but the police is the case. That's the way the story is yeah. being told. But if you will hear the stories of the mothers, just like the Tian Santos, who was saying, he has no arm, he has some shorts, and he was saying, don't kill me, I have an exam tomorrow. And all the all the people, they were saying, they were saying, he's a good boy, he's a good boy. So, so what what lesson do we get from here? 
So if I'm the police and I know killing is wrong, I would take other means. So I will not be forced to kill. So what's your proposal? Right? Well, it happens when the criminal first police yeah. Yeah. There's no question about that. Uh -huh. There's no question about that. But look at the many, many stories. Yeah. And it's not only one one research, mm -hmm. many re research mm -hmm. for almost all the people that were killed. Mm -hmm. The evidence were planted. So if, if, like if the person was trying to kill Hitler, right? Can you imagine? We, we, it's we are up to kill Hitler. In there, the because we're saying killing yes, Hitler is still killing yeah. and it's wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though it's so it's, it's good, be, you know, yeah. we, have see, we can take the side of the government and look at them because we, we need them. Yeah. We need them. At the same time, for the innocent, we protect them. Because look at all the mothers that are complaining now. Because they're saying it's okay. But they then another, another the person on my side, like, if he is a drug addict or, or a yeah. pushing, but please yeah. don't kill him. Yeah. He's not like, you know, before just the like any dog. Yeah. Then after the DNA yeah. testing, yeah. they were like, yeah. in a yeah. different yeah. setting. Yeah. Then first question is, what were some of the rights that were easily agreed on at first? Yeah. So what are the rights to be agreed to? Is it a real? It is wrong to keep someone else this way. I think that was like... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's easy to agree on no one should be kept as a slave. Yes. Medical attention. Did everyone agree on medical attention when you were sick? Yeah. No. We have a lot of discussion. Yes. Oh yeah. No, I I want to hear it. But um, just you know, making a general statement for everyone to know what's going on in the group. Um, See if there were any disagreements when things that were pretty easy. Med medical attention and education, we think should be a right. Yep. But unless somebody pays, willing to pay, how will it be real? So it's their words that can be declared as a right, but if you cannot carry it out, it's meaningless. It's a violation. So and I she wants to... Uh, report all these people who are in violation of the right. I'm a helpful person. <laughs> report where? That's a very good statement. Um, so what Tita Nita said was, if you, if no one is there to enforce these rights, then it is pointless. Does anyone disagree with that? Again? If, if there is no one to enforce these rights, then these rights were made pointlessly. Well, actually, that's true for all the, what we're writing there. If there's no one there, it's all pointless. You know. It's not only about it's not only about medical or education. Or you know. rational well, something we're trying to aspire we to. We work towards because then we can then we can organize around it rather than if it's pointless, it's you do nothing. It's not worth pursuing. Uh, I guess it's not. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, also, as us that if we don't agree or embrace the rights, then there's no one who will enforce it. Say that again, yeah. If we don't agree as a person that these are our rights, then there's no. Uh, then we cannot enforce it. Yeah. I'm saying that there is no need for other. Uh, authority or body to enforce it. If, if the right, if I'm uh, if the right is violated, if my right is violated, I have to enforce it. Mm -hmm. That's self protection. Yes. That's the only time we say killing is okay. Uh, in to your defend case, yourself. In your case, no, in our case here, number one, number immediately we all agree killing that is killing wrong. is wrong. But one of our exceptions is in self-defense, you can kill someone. Well, that's a that's an extension of that statement. Yeah, but if we, we <laughs> <laughs> that's already an if, what if? But from just the statement itself, it's already wrong. Mm -hmm. Killing is wrong. There's no exception. 
But if I'm protecting myself, is, and so, I'm about to die. Yeah, but you are not in your mind killing the person. You, in your mind, you are protecting yourself. So it's just an effect of yes, my behavior. Becomes, yeah. One way of saying uh, that Jerry was pointing out, uh, killing is wrong. It's just putting a different way. It's in the Judeo a Christian in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. It did not say except. You know, mm -hmm. basically, you don't That's kill. That's because yeah. Moses wasn't thinking about. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no, no. What the Bible is saying is yeah. that uh, just like uh, the light is there, whether there's an enforcer or not, it's yeah, not pointless. It's just like the Constitution mm -hmm. is there. Uh, uh, everyone is violating it, doesn't make it pointless. The Constitution is still there, you know. Yeah. And it's yeah. not pointless, it's not meaningless, but. And to King's point, you have to agree on things that are that you hold like sacred to yourself. Otherwise, you can't organize around it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the purpose. We put it down in words because we agree that this is an important value to all of us. And I guess that's what the United Nations did. And then it's up to us to live it, to live out the words with our actions. It's up to all of us. But really, if, it's, if the United Nations declares it, unless the citizens of each of the 120 nations live it out, it's not a live document. You know, it's fighting for human rights is such a, a imperfect way. Like uh, if uh, in Serbia, the dictator there is convicted and we were able to convict him not on all the mass killing that he did, the cleansing, but he he said, okay, I'm going to uh, light, plea, uh, light imprisonment because I pleaded guilty on probably the hundreds in this province, but not on all. You know, you, you move on. You know, because uh, it's such an imperfect uh, war, you know. You you struggle, you get, you get what you get, you know. It's because we are the will be the most frustrated people if we are so pure that it has to be one, two, three, four, five on all of these. It has to be war, you know. Then good luck to us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, did you write? Raise your hand. <laughs> but Jay wanted to participate in our group, so say what you wanted to say. <laughs> Well, no, I was just, just in walking around, there's similar conversations. Yeah. Um, just in, in the conversations about, like, death and killing, it, the, I agree, that, you know, I agree with the sentiment that I think it's important that those are good values to keep, keep, keep as core values and as guidance, but to be cautious of extremes because you can say, well, killing is wrong, but in, in case of self-defense, if someone, if, if I walk up to Jerry and take his wallet, he can, are you saying that he's, he can kill me out of self-defense? Or is that over, an overreach? So those are considerations too, is in terms of like degrees of response. So I just want to say that that statement is actually a, I mean, all of these statements are a rephrasing mm -hmm. of the articles of human rights. Mm -hmm. So killing is wrong is actually not the way that it was written in the declaration. I believe um, if you compare it to all of the articles, the closest relation to that is everyone has a right to life. Mm -hmm. It was Article 3. Mm -hmm. Article three. Right to life, liberty. So that's the negative uh, expression of the right to life, mm -hmm. right? So people can easily see it's okay to kill. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jeremy, the re very reason why we are here opposing that EJK is because this president, that president who was elected to the democratic process, is ignoring the fact that uh, prosecuting those or putting them to death eventually, if they are really that bad ass, uh, bad guys, you know. Uh, there is a due process. That's part of the system that comes to them as a president. You know, that's why we are opposing him. Because is the in many cases, some of those who can are actually innocent. Right, right. But that's that's basically other rights, right? We're just focusing on the right to life. Right but, to life. But then let's complicate it a little yeah. bit more. All right. 
What about what about when Marcos declared martial law? He, he set aside the rule of law. Of course. He said it aside. But doesn't but didn't the society have the chance? Didn't have what about the right of social protection? In other words, didn't people have the right to fight against Marcos and against the, the military? They okay. went so now, around. I think what I'm hearing is we cannot isolate one right, just the right to life. So there are other rights that go together, and, and that's the reason why there are 30 articles, right? So the right to life is supported by other rights, mm -hmm. right? Due process, self-determination, uh, self some, something like that. So it cannot be taken in isolation. Ah, it cannot be taken connected. in isolation, especially if it's framed on a negative statement. Mm -hmm. Right? I agree. Right? So if we put it in a positive statement, I don't think uh, people will say no. no. Because right to life, right? Just like Duterte declaring war against uh, drug-related issues, but then we don't talk about why these people who turn into drugs. We need to talk about their livelihood, their being exploited, have no right to medical. So there's so many reasons why a social fabric is crumbling. And then Duterte has a sweeping statement that these are all uh, the menace, which is not. So that's why we're opposing Duterte's uh, approach to drug programs. And we want him to consider drug rehab instead exactly. of healing. Exactly, the right to There's an alternative. Yes. yes. If, we, if it's really stated in positive, mm -hmm. I think that's that's the, the key here. If you state the right in a positive way, no one will say no. So, ang sinasabi po ni Manny Jerry is that some of these statements a lot are, it's wrong to do something onto someone. But when we declare things as a positive, like it is right, or we have the karapatan to have this, then it's very hard to to take that away. Yes. Disagree with that, yeah. you know. So yes, killing might be wrong in some cases, but it is always right for people to have the right to life. Yeah. Yeah. And to think about it, all major religion uh, they agree that. Uh, do unto yeah, others yeah. what you want to be done unto you, in one statement, you know. So that, that actually is a good statement to lead into the next question. What questions did you ask yourself when deciding where to place your cards on your statement? What were some of the questions that you asked yourself? So I thought a lot about imbalances of power and how they affect these statements, mm -hmm. particularly um, one of them was about being allowed to meet, uh, being allowed to like meet people mm -hmm. or interact with them. And I thought about, I thought about, you know, what if you are ignoring somebody's consent of somebody who has less power than you, mm -hmm. and you put yourself in their space, even though you might be threatening their safety or security in some way. Or like, there was a, one of the statements about limiting your rights to give others more rights, and I thought, well, that makes sense to me if you are somebody in a position of power and privilege and influence where you limit your rights so people who are being oppressed or um, you know, criminalized in some way are having to give them more space for their rights. I would, but then I thought, if you don't have a caveat like that, then it's really easy for somebody who has a lot of power to say, well, I'm going to limit all of your rights because I have a right to do X, Y, Z. That's the kind of question I ask myself. Yeah, when I read about this, uh, I think about the conflict of interest. Because for me, everything boils down to self-interest. What is everything, Jimmy? Hmm? What is everything that boils down to self-interest? Well, people join the organization because of what they think. They support the values of the organization. Exactly. But what is self-interest? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think self-interest is definitely uh, not uh, selfish interest. 
like self-interest would be the interest if, if I, I say my self-interest is protecting my life that should be common to all right however uh, if you if you relate this to power then that's a, a, a different conversation <coughs> Right? Because people in power, they have their own self-interest to maintain their power. And the people who don't have power, their self-interest is being violated. Is, is that correct? Kim? <laughs> no, I'm just scratching my ear. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Coming back to what we are fighting here, it's specific. Because we met here because of what's happening the Philippines on the EJK. Yes. Yeah. Uh, her point really, the imbalance of power, just the Bondi, you know, uh, Ravi David, a prominent sociologist who writes for the Empire, said, you know, do Makikita because the guy with the gun, the policeman, has it empowered by, yes. by Duterte, always have the upper hand. Keep, uh, they, they get these young people, you know, 15, 14, and turn them into the like the Japanese makapili, mm -hmm. put a uh, cover on their head. Sige, ituro mo sa akin sino ang drug dealer dito. In their fear, they do anything just to do yes. someone. They point on anyone the so that they, they, no, no, they no. will satisfy, the they will satisfy uh, the policeman. And same thing for this, most of these people who are killed. If they don't have any means of livelihood, the barang, the barang tay captain who is actually the, uh, the drug pusher, Tell them, okay, deliver can and drugs. And then the, the barangay, the bar barangay knows exactly who is the runners. Mm -hmm. And they point on them, they get killed, those people who have no power, they get killed on top of that, the barangay captain get killed 5,000 for its killing given by the Right now, yeah. that's the reason why I'm saying once you add the configuration of power, the self-interest is very important, right? The self-interest of the... Uh, the kids, right, is to survive mm -hmm. at that specific situation, mm -hmm. right? But if the self-interest of the barangay, uh, uh, the captain, is also to save life, mm -hmm. that's consistent. The self-interest are in the same position. But the self-interest of the cap uh, barangay captain now is to earn the 5,000 uh, because, because, because of their because power. He, because that runner will point on him. Right. He's the boss. Right. Yeah. So that's where uh, the conversation about power come in, comes in. Yeah. But the police also get money, gets money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, aside from the barangay captain. Here's the, here's the mandate of the police, right? To protect and secure the lives of the citizens. And that's self-interest, and the self-interest of the department is consistent with the self-interest of all people. No, um, wait, that's it's all to protect. That's right? precisely why we're here, because the judicial system doesn't protect them. That's happening. That's why we're coming here to push for a better judicial system. But there's processes. Otherwise, if you just say, it's all self-interest. That will be the end of civilization. No, I'm because just explaining yeah. actually the difference between self-interest and the selfish yeah. interest. Yeah. <coughs> That's the conflict of interest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we move on on this uh, uh, on, because from the king, the guy who has only self-interest with this pampano ng anong susunod na kakainin, you know, uh, we started coming with as a community. Then the better interest of the community was put up. So. Let's not be cynical, otherwise we should not be meeting here. Because if okay. you say cynical, then it's kind of... Then no, no. I, I think it's know? more of a conversation yeah. to have a common It opens up our minds yeah. in a lot of a deeper understanding of why... Because we need to always educate ourselves and all our offsprings, kids, about the historical pattern why we are in this position. Right. The exploitation in the Philippines, why there's an equal wealth distribution. It has to be dealt that way so that the issue of drug uh, program or campaign of, of Duterte will not be very uh, short, short size. Oh, um, Can I say, I don't like to the trend of our conversation where it's becoming so negative. I still want to <coughs> be at the level of what can I hope for. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that 
Duterte's um, role, oh, not role, position as president gave him the power to exercise. I don't quite know what that power is for, but he's not building the nation. So, but that being president gives you power, but that power that you have has to be used to build the people, right? So when he orders his Philippine National Police to kill the drug users, how do we say that's wrong? Killing is wrong. And you are not using power to benefit us, the citizens. What, what I am so concerned about is, so what if I have the freedom, but it doesn't develop me? I'm free to be what I want to be, right? But what if I have no reality of means? So that's what I want Duterte to do, to create a reality where Filipinos can develop and grow and be their full potential. That's what I want to see. And we are we're lucky to be living in America. I am always so grateful, like, oh, I love the CTA. I love when I walk to the, to the stop and there's a bus that will take me to where I want to go. I just love this ability to somehow my needs are being met and I can go to the library and I can go to... I can go to school, so I, I want government to govern <coughs> with positive purpose, mm -hmm. and he's not doing that, and Nino Aquino might not have been that good, but he didn't kill. <coughs> he killed. Yeah. Oh, he there are killed so many too. programs that that, right? Killed the right? Okay. Yeah, because Ma 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 Sampano is yeah. one example. And, and Luisita contractualization. Uh, Luisita he also, uh, but anyway, I have to step back, right? Uh, so to I, go back to yes. Charmaine's original yeah. question, which I think everyone really needs good answers to, is when we were going through this exercise, right, what things came to mind? It sounds like we all thought about reality versus what we really want. Like we we want yeah. positive change, we want better for our people, but we couldn't shake the fact that in reality, something is this coming to play. In reality, power imbalances come into play. In reality, people who are in positions of power and we put them there aren't doing what we want them to be doing. We feel this lack of representation here and in the Philippines. And that's what ultimately this space is about. And I know we're running a little behind schedule. Um, and some of us are hungry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to say that this conversation can be over if you guys want it to be. I mean, we, we, there, there will pause. be a time. Pause. Sorry, it's not over. It will be paused. But there will be a time um, later after lunch where we will talk about actions. Um, it is very important for us to take um, steps after this event. Um, to move us forward, to move us forward. So, Sh Shermin, uh, yes. on that uh, statement, uh, when we eat and think about what action to do, you know, let's not forget the, uh, 19, in 1986, for all the efforts of the left, the media, the uh, intellectuals, you know, in the end, the one who went to EDSA uh, is the church, you know, mm -hmm. we cannot deny that. And it's in the faith community and the faith foundation of the Filipinos, wherein we, most of them believe in a God of mercy and forgiveness, not killing, you know, like you forgive someone who did something wrong. And it's, this is the uh, opposite of Duterte. Duterte is the new secular leader, you know. You know very well, uh, you can, he cannot deny that he is not a believer, okay? He is a secular, first very secular leader, you know. And uh, he does, he's godless, you know. So it's in this, if we are going to work, because they are the most organized, it's the faith community. Let's not ignore them. That's where we can make an appeal because they know right from wrong, supposedly, you know. Uh, on that thought, that's it. Uh, I have some observation. I think uh, in the case of Duterte, his mindset is that if you are a drug user, you are you should be killed because you have no your brain has shrunk and there's no more way to rehabilitate. 
And I think that's, uh, that's the problem with Duterte. We return back to Duterte. Uh, indeed, uh, it's not uh, just a problem of killing, but for us it's the problem of why most Filipinos are accepting of this action. That is, you know, because the loss of this value is far much more devastating for us as a nation or as a people. Because we made the claim that we are a Christian nation. You know, the basic thing of uh, Christianity is that do not kill us, we said earlier, or we believe in a God of mercy and forgiveness. Not, you know, you might be a drug addict, but God will like to see you uh, be redeemed, right? There is redemption in what you have done. And this is not happening in a Christian nation because, like, right, just about two weeks ago, the, the survey said, 70% of the millennials, and these are the people who will take over when we go, uh, go wherever, whether up or down, you know, the millennials will be taking over the nation. They are, 70% are accepting, they approve of the terrorist actions. So that is a main concern, not only about the killings. The thing is that, uh, well, where did we go wrong here? How come, how come despite the, the fight for uh, for civil rights, for human rights in all these uh, last uh, 45 years, you know, uh, we are here where we are, you know. Well, I know, so yeah. can we take, but is that reality? I, 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 I think, think it's re I, I think it's happening all over, right? Uh, because people are usually being blamed for mm -hmm. uh, property theft, pro uh, 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 crimes and everything. I, I think by by their economic status, that's uh, uh, an alternative for them. But I would like to step back first because we are we are. It seems that we are agreeing uh, on the statistics that uh, that's being given to us. There was an article that came out, right? The statistics, the sample that they are using is not even hundred thousand. It's only one thousand in, in one area, mm -hmm. and they create that the. the, the result of that uh, uh, research is the sentiment of uh, the general public. So there was already a challenge on, on the result of that statistics that millennial 70% of them are actually uh, in favor. And then there's another article that came out about the social media that as if the social media, all, almost all of the people in social media support Duterte. So a research came from uh, I think Harvard saying uh, there's really a paid troll. You know, the thing is that we want to address that. That's the most. Ours is a support group. We want we will be able to tackle the therapy by our own, but we can certainly raise the consciousness of the community where we live in. Okay. Okay. So basically, you're saying yeah. information campaign, yeah. uh, and yet signature campaign, to right? Jerry, excuse me, I have to leave. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Well, thank you. Uh, if I can make a real quick comment. Sure. One of the things that might be real nice, I like the idea of the signature campaign here, but also if you could come together on a statement and send it to the news media in okay. Manila, yeah. Yeah. I think they would be very impressed that Filipinos in, in, in Chicago had come together and came, came up. I'm open to the okay. one. Sure. I will welcome it. It's the one full page statement written by... All of you, you know, like a picture signature. Is there any agreement on that one? If we can come up with a statement, right? Since you all signed up, mm -hmm. right? So this, uh, we will count the number of people who signed up, and then we will come up with the statement, and then Anon will will uh, course through yeah. inquire. You, you, I don't know about inquire. I can speak about okay. inquire. I can speak about. Okay. So we said we need to be but, but, but then we have to answer the two. Yes, 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 yes. And then to fill a um, messenger. So this, okay. Uh, do you agree that at least the proceedings of this session will be reported, right, through a um, messenger, Pinoy, and Yoli Tubalinal and other uh, local paper? 
Yes. 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 My suggestion. My name is Charmaine Belisa Lisa. I am currently the program director, a uh, programming director of uh, Unipro, which stands for uh, Filipino American Unity for Progress uh, in the Chicago chapter. So currently, we just uh, attended this event for uh, to commemorate um, or to honor the International Declaration of Human Rights. Um, what was the uh, highlight of? Uh, this uh, conversation today? So, um, well, all of the collaborating organizations with AFIRE, CERCAPOLTIG, to name a few, um, we all wanted to make sure that um, everyone who attended were very well aware that these rights existed and that they are being violated. Um, all throughout the world, but especially concerning um, the Philippines. Um, and we wanted to, the highlight was we were able to help them um, take into heart all of these rights um, and to really analyze them and criti critically think about them and how they are being applied in the world now, how they are being, how they are being violated, and uh, how we can use them to move forward. Um, and so not only were we able to analyze um, a few uh, rights, we were also able to talk about how we can move forward with them. Um, we talked about um, pledging, we talked about uh, information and signature campaigns, talking about how we can uh, create a unified statement that we can send to news press in Manila um, to really have our voices heard. Do you open visions, uh, Charmaine, for being the host of this uh, event today and uh, best wishes to your uh, uh, career and other uh, endeavors. Thank and this so is Joseph Lariosa of the Journal of Global Health. This is, this is uh, Joseph J. Lariosa, and I am here at the HANA Center covering the United Nations uh, Day on Human Rights here in Chicago, Illinois. I am here with you with uh, Charmaine Belisa Lisa and uh, Mr. Ano Santos. Uh, so Pinoy Magazine. Okay. Taking our video. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh,